हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू द डिस्कशन ऑफ द एम सी क्यूज रिलेटेड टू हेमेटोलॉजी पार्ट एंड हेमेटोलॉजी एस यू ऑलवेज नो दे कैरी सेवन टू एट क्वेश्चन इन द फॉरन मेडिकल ग्रेजुएट एग्जामिनेशन सो हैव चोजन वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट एम सी क्यूज एंड दिस आर सर्टीन सम कॉन्सेप्ट टू बी रिमेंबर्ड अ चाइल्ड प्रेजेंटेड विद माइक्रोसाइटिक हाइपोक्रोमिक एनीमिया विद नॉर्मल लेवल्स ऑफ आर बी सी प्रोटोपोरफाइरिन मोस्ट लाइकली द डायग्नोसिस इज Now the first line given is microcytic hypochromic anemia hypochromic which can be seen in all the four right now the point is which one of us this has the normal levels of rbc protoporphyrin if you consider hemoglobin this is basically is the heme part and this is the globin part and this globin part basically means alpha beta gamma and delta chains this heme part has got two parts one is the iron part and one is the protoporphyrin part so if in your body due to any reason the iron level decreases the protoporphyrin level will increase so that means protoporphyrin level will increase in iron deficiency anemia and also in anemia of chronic inflammation because here serum iron level is decreased right then lead basically lead inhibits the enzyme delta ala dehydratase dehydratase which basically causes the union of iron and protoporphyrin so if this enzyme is inhibited again they both will not combine and there will be increase in the level of protoporphyrin so protoporphyrin is also increased in the lead toxicity but this is normal in the thalassemia right a very common question but important to be remembered which of the following is best in differentiating between anemia of chronic inflammation and the iron deficiency anemia is right now basically you should remember like this once the iron reaches the blood once the iron reaches the blood what happens is this combines with the transferrin this combines with the transferrin and then it goes to the liver and this goes to the bone marrow this goes to the liver this goes to the bone marrow now if you consider in the bone marrow this transferrin is received by transferrin receptor protein transferrin receptor protein and this transferrin receptor protein they take iron from the transferrin and this iron is used for erythropoiesis or it is stored in the cells sideroblasts it is stored in the cells sideroblasts right so what happens in basically iron deficiency anemia is ferritin is decreased and ferritin is the storage form of iron so if ferritin is decreased this ferritin which is present in so called you can say in the sideroblast also this ferritin says to the transferrin receptor protein go and bring the iron so the transferrin receptor protein leaves the bone marrow goes in the blood so what happens to the transferrin receptor protein level that is increased that is increased right but in the anemia of chronic inflammation ferritin is normal or decreased so sorry it is normal or increased normal or increased if it is normal or increased what happens is transferrin receptor protein does not go out so they remain inside the bone marrow so what happens here the transferrin receptor protein level is normal always remember the best test in differentiating the anemia of chronic inflammation and iron deficiency anemia is the serum transferrin receptor patient was treated with sulfonamides for 7 days and hemoglobin decreased 
from 13.5 to 19. Point, sorry, 9.5. There is a decrease in hemoglobin on particularly giving a drug. So, if there is decrease in hemoglobin, there is something by which this drugs is causing damage to the hemoglobin and this can be seen in G6PD deficiency, right? In G6PD deficiency, when you give certain drugs, which one of the drugs can be sulfonamides. Sulfonamides, this sulfonamides is going to cause hemoglobinuria because it will cause the damage to the hemoglobin, right? So, what can happen? Decreased hemoglobin can be seen. Just a simple one-liner question. So, this is something a picture related to G6PD deficiency. Which is the most useful immunohistochemical stain to use when assessing remission status? This is important. You want to know whether there is no relapse and everything is controlled or not. And here the answer is CD20. You need to understand here, hairy cell leukemia is a tumor of B cell. It is a tumor of the B cell. And the CD20 marker is present on the B cell. CD20 marker is present on the B cell is right. So if there is remission, what should happen? The CD20 marker should be normal. So marker of remission is CD20, but best marker of disease is best marker of disease is an exin one, right? There is a difference. I have asked here regarding the remission. In the remission, the answer has to be CD20. 40 year old male non smoker, that is one point presented with heaviness in the head, flushing of the face. He was found to have plethora and redness in hands and feet. He is also hepatosplenomegaly. He is suspected to have polycythemia vera. And polycythemia vera, that is a myeloproliferative disorder. Myeloproliferative disorder means all myeloid cells are increased. So here there is increased in the myeloid cells. So there is increased RBCs, there is increased platelets, there is increased granulocytes and there is increased monocytes. So basically all these cells are increased and the essential feature is the JAK2 mutation. JAK2 mutation, right? And the thing you need to remember here, erythropoietin levels are normal or disproportionately low. They are normal or disproportionately low, right? So that means A or B cannot be the choice, clear? And if I choose the C1, it is given normal red cell mass that is not seen. So the most appropriate answer is low erythropoietin level and raised red cell masses, right? So this is the regarding polycythemia where joint hematoma can be seen in all except. Now joint, hemat joint hematoma hemarthrosis can be seen in hemophilia A and this can be seen in hemophilia B. And this can also be seen in type 3 von Willebrand disease where there is severe deficiency of factor 8. There is severe deficiency of factor 8 and factor 8 is a carrier, sorry, von Willebrand factor is a carrier of factor 8. It is a carrier of factor 8. So, if there is von Willebrand disease, indirectly again, the factor 8 level will decrease. And if factor 8 or 9 decreases, there can be heme arthrosis. So, heme arthrosis can be seen in hemophilia A, hemophilia B and type 3 von Willebrand disease. bernard Solier syndrome is basically a platelet functional disorder. 
it is a platelet functional disorder and this will usually present with superficial hemorrhage this will usually present with the superficial hemorrhages right then this bernard solier is deficiency of glycoprotein 1b by 9s right so basically joint hematoma can be seen in hemophilia hema a hemophilia b and type 3 von willebrand disease 12 year old boy presented with bleeding into gums while brushing and occasional epistaxis that means he was also found to have skin bruises so it is a superficial hemorrhage there is presence of hemorrhage in the skin and the mucosa he was also found having normal platelet and normal pt the bleeding time and aptt are prolonged most likely is right now if you consider liver disease it should affect 2 7 9 10 10 clotting factor and if 7 is affected then pt should increase prothrombin time should increase but that is not there so it is not this right then glansman thromboasthenia and bernard solier both are the platelet functional disorders and in platelet functional disorders it is very true that pt will be normal and bleeding time will be increased bleeding time will be increased but aptt should be normal here because this is not affecting any clotting factor so this is basically a von willebrand disease picture right answer is 2 because von willebrand factor has two effects first is the binding of platelets to endothelium binding of platelets to endothelium so if this function will be affected there is increased bleeding time increased bleeding time and secondly it is a carrier of factor 8 it is a carrier of factor 8 right so what will happen in that condition aptt will be increased so both the findings which are given bleeding time and aptt are prolonged that is explained by the von willebrand disease clear so the right answer here is the choice number b von willebrand disease clinical studies performed with subjects who are adults and found to have anemia their clinical histories and lab findings are reviewed it is observed that ingestion of a drug preceded development of the anemia in some of the subjects which of the following is most likely to be found in person without a history of drug injection ingestion he is asking without autoimmune hemolytic anemia is seen with certain drugs for example methyl dopa so this is drug associated macrocytic anemia is due to defect in dna synthesis it is due to defect in dna synthesis and dna synthesis defect can be seen with the anti cancer drugs for example 6 mercaptopurine or maybe cytosine arabinoside any particular drug any particular drug which basically affects the dna synthesis can lead to this and aplastic anemia is very well associated with the drugs there are certain drugs which can cause bone marrow suppression so this can cause aplastic anemia but microcytic anemia is not related to any drug therapy so the right answer out of the four given here is the microcytic anemia right so i hope you enjoy this session here do subscribe to our channel team motivation is always and always for the foreign medical graduates and we think always for you as fast thanks mm -hmm.